working on seams and curves, sewing different types of seams and sewing different types of curves and corners. And we're gonna start with our convex and concave curves. So the reason that these types of curves are important is because they are your neck, your necklines and your armholes or your scalloped edge on the edge of a sleeve or a dress. So we'll start first with our concave curve and I'll draw it out so that it's easier to see. So a concave curve comes out, out and we're gonna sew that rounded fullness by taking two pieces of our scrap fabric and just cutting this curve into them. Okay, so nothing fancy. We've just got our curve there. Now, I'm gonna square up these edges just so that it looks nice and clean. And we're gonna take, these are just scraps, we're gonna take this over to the machine and we're gonna sew our seam about a half an inch in. We're gonna use a general seam allowance of a half an inch for these next couple of techniques. So we're gonna sew half an inch in and then we'll flip it. So we are threaded up here and ready to start sewing. You can do a few back stitches uh, just to lock it in with any of these uh, that we're gonna cover today. Now, as we're sewing, you may need to lift the presser foot a few times to continue this curve. That's okay, but make very small adjustments because we really don't want that curve to look jagged. We want it to look smooth. So as we're turning, we're just gonna keep lifting the presser foot through the turn and adjusting the tiniest bit. All the while, we're trying to keep our half an inch, and for me, I have this marked on my um, needle plate, that half an inch seam allowance. All right, and then we'll finish up. All right, so while we've got this good lighting, take a look here. See how that curve is very much rounded? Now, I drew this in with permanent marker. I don't suggest you, you don't have to take the time to draw in the seam allowance because I want you to get used to seeing the seam allowance and feeling what is half an inch, what is a quarter inch. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to the iron. The iron is our most important tool here in making this curve finished on the outside. We're first going to clip. Any curves, any corners must be clipped because all of this fabric here is larger than the fabric it's going to be forced to turn into. So see when we turn that, it doesn't want to fit because there's too much bulk in there. That's why we need to clip. And in some cases, if there is too much fabric, we may even notch. So not just clip, but actually take whole little chunks out. We wanna be very careful to clip close to the seam, but not through the seam. That's very important. We don't wanna get closer than say an eighth of an inch to that seam, or then it's gonna be weak at that point and eventually it will bust. Okay. So you see how I've clipped those notches? Again, doesn't have to be super clean because this is gonna be hidden on the inside. Now, as we turn it to the outside, we can already see that that curve is fitting better and that that bulk is reduced. But now we're gonna hit it with our iron and steam, always with the steam, and we'll be able to really get that curve to flatten out. One of the tricks I like to use is you see how I'm rolling the fabric? I'm rolling it to get that extra fabric out and press that seam as far out as I can, and then iron. See how smooth that is? And maybe I have a flat point right there, so I'm just gonna reach in there and kind of push that out a little. You can see my thread because I'm intentionally using a darker color. 
and I'm just gonna roll that out a little bit more. And this is just all about finessing and ironing, finessing and ironing. There you go. So again, like I said, this would be the kind of thing that we might see on the edge of a dress, a scalloped edge of a dress, if you've ever wondered how they do that. Um, and gosh, lots of curves, lots of different curves for dresses. So um, next, we're gonna move on to the convex.